Anger by Alexander Augustus Narrated by Daniel Collard Volume 2, Chapter 1 Anger is a posthumous child. Never the first to arrive, anger takes the hand of its parent and is led through rings of fire. Its skin shines as burnished bronze and its hairs do curl back to a cinder. Anger observes with a multitude of eyes, recording each event in striking detail. And finally, once enacted, Anger is blamed as its parents vanish into the wilderness. It was dark inside the mutant's head. The virgin sea stretched out into the formless void as pure as transparent glass, like unto crystal, but tumultuous and terrifying. Darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind swept over the face of the waters. Heavy, petrified air forebode a storm. Suddenly, the veil of night was shot through with blinding light as a colossal ellipse of fire opened in the heavens. God's eye. And in the midst of that eye appeared the face of Cup, then the limp body of Cup, naked and gaunt suspended within the frame of the eye. The fire surrounding the vision was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, striking down into the ocean and parting it asunder. For a lucid moment, the face of the water was lit with terrible white light. Its surface was boiling and pulsating with black shapes, slithering beasts, scaled, beat, clawed and venomous creatures, all beating their useless wings which covered their faces. Tens of thousands and thousands of thousands inhabiting the sea, pouring into the chasm made by the colossal eye of light. The beasts rested not day nor night, saying, Holy, 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 almighty ID, which was and is and is to come. The winds bellowed thunder through the skies, and boiling red rain came whipping down. And the chasm made by the lightning strike boiled over furiously. And from the expansion of foam, a dome formed, separating the waters from the waters and opening as a gate. Through this terrible gate sprung primordial life forms, first as cells, invisible to the naked eye, then pairing and splitting growing and expanding. They quivered and took form as little pink squishy bodies. Fetuses with limbs reaching outwards, paddling, beating. The scaly and winged beasts attacked these bodies. They swerved in the water, ducking to meet their clambering prey, ripping at limbs or snapping them up whole. Their power was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they did bite also. I prayed. Almighty ID, open my eyes. And my eyes opened for the first time. I spluttered and choked on disembodied clumps of scalp and mutilated fingers. A slippery membrane clung about my body. I pulled at a cord in my throat and dragged it out of my windpipe with a nauseating resistance suction. Naked and blood-soaked, gasping for breath, I slipped my hands down to my sides, checking, checking. Phone? Money? Keys? I panicked. Where? 
Where are phone, money, keys? Tiny but determined, I pulled, paddled and poured my way over the other bodies. Tens of hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of variations of myself, all pink and naked, all fleeing from the teeth and stingers, for they did hurt. Poisonous snakes were swimming among us and they did bite us. Many died. A small boy, my mirror image, clawed helplessly at the water's surface with his one remaining arm. His legs kicked violently under the water as he sank, inhaled water and bobbed back up to the surface. He reached towards me, struggling to keep his mouth open. F -f 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 phone He burbled, but was pulled below by something iron-crusted and strong. And I beheld, lo, in the midst of the tumultuous sea, a bright light shining over the distant waters. Slipping, sliding, punching and flailing, I dragged myself between the butchered marshmallow corpses of myself, the dense volume of which began to form a kind of fleshy raft. I swam towards the light, with the waters lapping against my face, and the storm gale whipping it into spray. I swallowed stray chunks of flesh as I gasped for air. In the deep recesses of my stomach, an ache, a spark, as the life vitality of my dismembered clones was released into me. My eyesight grew sharper and my muscles stronger. The bodies of my fallen selves nourished me. I felt an overwhelming kinship with the other struggling boys, an outpouring of love. The sea was more blood than water, and with every gulp I grew larger and stronger. I could see others too who were growing and developing as they consumed the corpses, leaving younger bodies to get picked off by the beasts. As they grew, I began to sense their feelings and experience their struggle, as though these bodies were phantom limbs of my own. Free from the predation of the scaly and winged creatures, we were able to feast unhindered. We grew into young children with big blue eyes and thick locks of blonde hair, darkened and slicked with coagulating blood. My larger selves now numbered in the tens, and we formed between us the squishy raft of flesh by pushing together multitudes of dead and dying bodies. We all clambered aboard and began paddling towards the light. I pulled my way to the middle of the mass and stood with one foot on an exposed skull and the other sinking into the innards of a torso. Coated in drying blood, I scraped the mush from my face and looked towards the distant, shining light. The atmosphere was humid. I placed my cherubim hand above my eyes and peered forward into the darkness. The distant glow emanated from a figure a wrinkled giant with his head and his hairs as flames of fire, shaped as a star with seven points about his face. He beckoned, with bony fingers outstretched. He must have devoured many babies to grow so old, I thought. I turned to my other bodies and inspected their faces by the distant flickering light afforded to me. They had pointed noses, young, round cheeks and wild, dilated eyes. Each had a fringe which gathered in a sharp point above the bridge of the nose and two crowns in the hair atop the head. This gave the hair the appearance of fox ears. My head pounded with visions of another life, thinner, breathable air, solid ground, an adult body, something called London. I had left the watery gate far behind and was floating towards the light. My other surviving bodies on the raft had grown to roughly the same stature, but some were brought low by severed limbs or poisoned flesh. All of my bodies moved simultaneously, lifting each other's arms and inspecting the damage. I found that I could feel the pains of their punctures and wounds as though we were connected. When one of my bodies moved, the others also moved. When one of my bodies stood still, they all stood still. And when I rose from the ground, all my bodies rose along with them, because my living spirit was in all these bodies. We were connected too to the fallen and struggling little fetuses in the water. 
and we felt their agonies as pinpricks in the heart. The healthy numbered seven, the damaged numbered four and ten, and all one and twenty looked alike. The storm raged on. Myself. Myself. Our voices roared as a multitude of people. Do you remember? Do you remember? We poured out in chorus, then stopped in shock. But, but how, how can it be? How can it be? All bodies spake with a single voice. I roared into the storm with one and twenty gnashing mouths. At once I had a pang of memory and slapped all one and twenty of my naked sides. Phone! Phone. Money. Money! Keys! I had only vague recollections of what the words meant, but my instincts told me that these items were paramount to survival. I had to find them. I surveyed the anatomy of the crowd. Those bodies with hands remaining placed them to my mouths in contemplation, and from every mouth I did continue to speak. To, to the, the damaged, damaged four and ten, and ten bodies, bodies, I blame, I blame myself, myself not for the injuries incurred, and, and I, I have, have nothing, nothing against thy bodies. bodies. All one and twenty mouths did pause and take a sharp breath. However, I must, I must sup, sup on, on my flesh, flesh so I may grow healthy, healthy and strong. strong. I chimed as a chorus. I answered myself. Yes, yes myself. Go, go forth, forth into, into the world, world subdue, subdue and dominate it, and do not forget these sacrifices. This, this is my body, which, which is given for you. Do, do this in remembrance of me. me. All mouths sang without hesitation. All my brains knew this night was full of horrors, and knew I must grow in stature to survive it. By this time, the light in the distance had grown stronger. The Elder still beckoned to me with a fixed stare, with beady eyes peering from seven flames about his face. His height appeared to be fifteen cubits and a span. In the heavens above, the darkness was scarred with a multitude of openings. Huge ones, tiny ones, all strung along in rows, arranged around each other in constellations. God had hundreds of thousands and thousands of thousands of eyes, and God's eyes were all opening and closing, revealing more visions and opening more gates, through which many things did spring. Vegetation, buildings, creatures, all shooting branched lightning into the distant seas and spewing forms into the abyss. The silhouettes of other groups of cups flashed up in the far distance. I knelt down to another self who lay panting on the human raft. My fibula had shattered and twisted white spikes out of my leg. This body placed a quivering hand up to my face and held it. The whole group of myself sang together. It's, it's okay, okay, little one. one. Be, Be brave. brave. And I began to feast on my flesh. This is right, I thought, as I ate myself alive. I remember now how it all works. Far above, another eye of God opened, and my bodies did cower as fire lit up the face of the waters and lightning shot down into the depths. In that vision I did see a slip of paper with a portrait of an elderly woman wearing a crown, rendered in profile, and the markings of pound and five which were quite foreign to me. The paper was pulled flat and open between two hands like a butterfly, and across that surface I did read, Dear Cup, wake up! Cup, remember, the light wins once more! These words did flash furiously through the vision in the heavens. I did experience a sharp pang of memory, of release, air rushing to my lungs, and a will to live. After we had feasted, the septet of survivors had grown into young adolescents. As I examined the group of short, slender boys with my four and ten eyes, I saw seven identical faces staring back. I, I think, think upon my forehead is the name of... Cup, we said in unison. Yes, yes we all agreed, greeting one another. I had eaten my fill and was dizzy with energy as my sight merged and separated with the other bodies. 
how liberating it was to see from all four and ten of my eyes and control all four and ten of my arms and legs. My conscious mind now belonged to all seven of these young men, and I valued not the attachment to one body over another. I paddled with four and ten arms towards the elder. Some small undeveloped cups clung to the edges of the raft or tried to swim alongside, but as I neared the almighty glow, the water simmered, then boiled, causing the little cups to squeal and burn before floating motionless. As the elder came clearly into view, he appeared less a man than a plant. Upon his forehead the name of Sun, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. He towered over me with a neck as long as a giraffe's, sloping down into a wide, shapeless body, all draped in white raiment. Seven long and slender arms extended out towards each of my selves, beckoning my bodies forward. I could not see the legs of his form, only a long, crooked neck protruding from a mass of gold-embroidered raiment. He seemed more like a sunflower than a human. His star-shaped head dangled and hovered majestically above the waves. And he never stopped smiling, like a parent watching a child learn to walk. Come hither, youngsters. What do you seek? Reformed ham? Little treasures? The great cup of tea? Your own three-dimensional printer? The elder scooped up a boiled cup fetus that was floating alongside the raft and slipped it under his raiment. A prime time extravaganza? Something stirred under the fabric, and we were all wary. Dear Dear sir, sir, upon upon my my forehead's the name of Cup. cup. All seven of myself greeted the star man. There There are are a great great many many things things I desire, desire, such such as the the great great cup cup of tea, tea, but what I need are my own phone, phone, money money and and keys. keys. I did not mention ID, which felt like sacred knowledge, a secret not to be shared. The Elder fanned the white raiment out towards our raft. Come now, step over to me, he croaked. Float no longer on the corpses of fallen cups. I have been here through many generations, and I possess the phone, money, and keys you seek. You were born naked, helpless and destitute, and so you must rely on my phone, money, and keys until you earn your own. You must learn my rules, follow my rules, and you shall earn them eventually. Something stirred under his draped raiment. Did my guiding light not bring you safely thus far? I reached down with four and ten hands and clasped onto myself so as to stand in a solid formation without turning suspicious eyes away from the Star Elder. Yes, Yes, sir. I will will step step over to you and inspect your phone, phone, money and keys. keys. But But first you must relate relate the the secrets secrets you are concealing under that that raiment. Oh, you offend me! The Elder flung his head backwards into the sky, then swerved it down to face mine with one single motion his long neck snapping like a catapult. Come now, boys. Do you not remember the sun? I am the sun! Without my light, you would not have thus far survived. Therefore, step over to me. There is nothing under this raiment which would aggress against you. I stepped backwards and pushed off with seven of my feet outstretched so that the raft floated away slightly. Do Do not not deceive me, Elder. Elder. I I remember the sun. It had no voice, and it was was contained contained within within no man. man. You You are are a lesser lesser light. light. There was a knowing in my four and ten eyes, and I squeezed tightly my four and ten hands. I am from from London, London, I said, without certainty, but with a recollection that this statement could legitimize things. The star man's eyes narrowed, and he exhaled in frustration. Here, 
if it may comfort you, you may each take one of my seven flames. The star man's seven arms reached up and pulled the first of the flames from his head with a terrible wailing. Oh, holy! He screeched. He plucked them, one by one. Oh, holy! Oh, holy! Oh, holy! Oh, holy! Oh, holy! Oh, holy! The seven flames curled up in his seven palms, and he laid them under my seven chins so that my eyes were blinded by the light. What is wrong, little boys? He did squawk at me. My skin did burn. My lashes did burn. The elder did lick his lips as I roasted, and his seven hands did slip around my necks. Salivating, he leaned in and said, Dear boys, I have something against thee. Acting suddenly, to the elder's astonishment, I leant forward and did eat the flame he burned me with, as did my other six selves, so that my burnt hair and skin did grow back and begin to glow. Little flames did burst out from under my eyelids and from under my fingernails. My seven faces flashed like lightning, and my four and ten eyes flamed like torches. My countenance was as the sun itself shone in my strength. I turned to myself, and for the first time I did smile at myself. Not the same wry smile as the elder, but an honest smile. I could not stop smiling, in fact. Upon my forehead, the name of Mischief, I thought. I was not supposed to do that. The star man recoiled in shock. Clever! A great many have crawled to my shores, but few as bold as you. He tutted with irked curiosity, swiftly igniting new flames about his face. Now you took a great gift from me. See, there is nothing to fear. Come to me now. He pulled at my bodies. Thunder continued to roll across the sky as another of God's colossal eyes opened, maybe 2,000 cubits away. Sending an explosion of light through the water and making the raft bob up and down. This time, a vision of a stout man in a lab coat, holding a clipboard, appeared inside the opening. He held a magnifying glass and appeared to be inspecting the world from within the vision. I looked with four and ten eyes as my own syndicate of insects. The star man observed this and clucked with impatience. Come now, boys. There are others who are drawn to my light, and I shall have to see to their needs after yours. Other rafts of cups were approaching the light from all angles, tens of hundreds and hundreds of hundreds. Sir, I will step to thee only if you relate where I might find my own phone, money and keys, for this is what I need to survive. Phone, money and keys are ancient treasures. They were here even before my time. Lucky for you, I have some under my raiment. Would you like to see them? His seven palms reached out towards us. Emboldened in my new power, I took all seven of his hands and stepped lightly onto his raiment-covered base. Fools! He shrieked wickedly as his fists rained down on the raft, splitting the body parts and disbanding it. They boiled up and drifted away. My cells all tripped this way and that as he ripped the raiment from under my feet, revealing a colossal face bulging from his stomach. It was the likeness of my cells, but with jagged fangs protruding like burning shards. It did snap and bite at me. The teeth were gnashing, and a wet red tongue swiped at my cells, tripping my bodies further. The elder's seven arms pulled at one of my bodies, gouging at my eyes as I writhed and kicked in the air, shrieking as I clambered up to release myself. 
Another of my bodies did topple into the mouth of the widely gaping beast, and its sharp teeth clamped down onto my head, splitting it open like a poppy seed. No! no! I screamed with six remaining tongues, and with one body I did follow, diving headfirst into the beast's belly. With the light of my spirit, I could see in the darkness, and the boiling golden bile in his stomach burned me not, and I did drink of the bile, and the star man could digest me not. I did contain the spirit of the sun, and with my mouth and teeth I did rip and bite at his organs with twitching lips and a red tongue. Gnashing and swallowing, I did rip the flesh along the green of the meat so that meat sections came off. I remember! I roared with my multitude of voices, flames flashing in my twelve remaining eyes and six faces. The Elder shares not the knowledge he keepeth. He would seek to use me for his own gain! As I consumed and digested the Star Man, my mouths were filled with laughter and my tongues with shouts of joy. I am not, I am not supposed to be doing this! I giggled. My sharp teeth bet down on a juicy polyp and burst it open like a pomegranate seed. The star man's hanging face was catapulting back and forth, now writhing and shrieking in agony, flopping around and bashing at my bodies above. He bit down hard on another one of my legs and ripped it clean off, amputating it. It dropped into his stomach and kicked me in the back of the head. With a roar, my remaining bodies died too into the Elder's stomach, and as a shoal of piranhas I devoured his innards like they were a can of peeled tomatoes. <coughs> he screeched in agony. I feasted on his soft interior flesh, and in doing so, I grew into my teenage years, shooting up in height cubit by cubit. I systematically demolished him in minutes. Once done, I stood with six full bellies, and with my remaining arms explored the structure of the star man's bones, glowing brilliant white after we had licked them clean. The unusual structure of his body made for a buoyant and protective ship the cone-shaped ribcage narrowing to a long, thin neck which supported his small skull. This skull sloped out of the water like a figurehead, whereas the other, larger snapping skull, which did swallow us, served as a roof. The star man's seven arms stretched into the waters, and I saw I could use them to row with. To, to the, the one fallen, fallen body and two, two damaged, damaged bodies, bodies. I blame myself not for the injuries incurred, and I have nothing against thee. I held all my hands tightly. However, I must sup on my flesh so I may grow healthy and strong and dominate the world. The two damaged bodies knelt down willingly alongside the fallen self, and together we sang, This is my body, which is given for you. Do, do, do this, this in, in remembrance, remembrance of, of me. me. I supped lovingly on my own bodies, still grinning with seven faces all the while. I was now a tetrarchy. I felt the presence of my fallen selves sleeping safely within my cells, and in my reflections on the water, I saw my faces alight with their aspirations. My skin glowed like Lucifer's. It was a great gift which must have been coveted by those in the shadows. I could see that beyond the glow of my bodies, black things bulged from the darkness. They jostled for space just out of the light. Other cups, with similar but deformed faces, were appearing on rafts of all manner, in groups of varying numbers. Other foreign things also arrived from the strange cosmos visible through the holes in the sky shadowy orchids and ferns, gelatinous creatures, toads and pigeons, architectural cornices, household appliances, men I did not recognize and even women. Tens of thousands and thousands of thousands of them surrounded us, 
figures shot down into the fertile waters from the eyes of God. All of them called out, Phone? Or money? Or keys? None of them remembered ID. Only I remembered that. All the while, the storm raged on. Somehow, I knew that haste was imperative. Mm.